Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So in this video, I will be explaining you all about purine degradation pathway in detail. So we all know that uh, nucleic acids, those are DNA and RNA. So when the cell do not want DNA and RNA, means when the cell turnover is going on, so there will be breakdown of DNA and RNA into their nucle individual nucleotides. So we have two kinds of nucleotides, uh, purine nucleotides and pyrimidine nucleotides. Majority of time, these nucleotides are salvaged to make new DNA and RNA molecule. So only thing is when the cell do not uh, want more and more DNA and RNA to be synthesized. So during that time, the cell turnover process, when the nucleotides are released, they need to undergo degradation. Now there are two kinds of purine, uh, and note that uh, purine nucleotide uh, degradation pathway will be going on predominantly in the peroxisomes in our cells. Now we, we have two purine nucleotides here, one is uh, AMP adenosine monophosphate, other is a uh, GMP guanosine monophosphate. Let's see how these two purine nucleotides will undergo degradation. Now the AMP will undergo a deamination process into IMP adenosine monophosphate. And the job is done by AMP deaminase. As you can see, there is a release of ammonium ion there. And this is one of the source of ammonium ion in our body. Purine nucleotide cycle is one of the source of ammonium ion in our body. That ammonium ion has to be handled properly. Otherwise, it can lead to hyperammonemia. I have a video on this, like how this ammonium ion is handled, especially by glutamate dehydrogenase reaction. The link for that video is there in the description below. And also note that I have all the complete series of videos on uh, purine nucleotide biosynthesis regulation, purine nucleotide biosynthesis and regulation, ribonucleotide reductase, gout, and all that uh, videos are all available in the description below. Links are there. Now, what happens to IMP? IMP is converted into inosine. Now the purine uh, nucleotide is converted into nucleoside, nucleotide is converted into nucleoside inosine and that is done after the release of inorganic phosphate. So the phosphate is removed, nucleotide IMP converted to nucleoside inosine, job is done by 5' nucleotidase enzyme. Okay. Now what will happen to inosine? Inosine is converted into hyposanthine after the release of ribose 1-phosphate. Now the ribose 1-phosphate ribose is released from this molecule. Nucleoside is converted into free base after the removal of uh, sugar molecule ribose. How this happens? Inorganic phosphate is incorporated into the reaction and uh, ribose sugar is removed. That job is done by purine nucleoside phosphorylase enzyme. It's a broad spectrum general enzyme here. So nucleoside phosphorylase. Phosphorylases, they add inorganic phosphate and break the bond and release sugar molecule ribose. That's how inosine is converted into hyposanthine. Now what will happen to hyposanthine? Before I come to that point, uh, uh, point let me uh, uh, explain you what will happen to GMP there. Now the guanosine monophosphate, which is a sec another uh, purine nucleotide, it will be converted into guano guanosine by removal of uh, phosphate. That is a purine nucleotide GMP is converted into purine nucleoside after the removal of phosphate. Job is done by 5' nucleotidase enzyme. Now what will happen to purine nucleoside guanosine? Now the guanosine is converted into guanine. That is guanosine is a nucleoside. Guanine is a free base. That means you are removing ribose 1-phosphate. How that is done? Inorganic phosphate is incorporated into the reaction and ribose 1-phosphate is released. That job is done by purine nucleoside phosphorylase. Same mechanism what I have explained here. Now what will happen to guanine? Guanine will be converted into xanthine after the removal of ammonium ion. That is one more ammonium ion released here. The job is done by guanase enzyme. So guanine is converted to xanthine. Now that's a uh, free purine base there. Now what will happen to hyposanthine and what will happen to xanthine? This is where is the most important enzyme, high yield enzyme for all kinds of exam. So hyposanthine is converted into xanthine. So where uh, molecular oxygen is incorporated into the reaction and hydrogen peroxide is released, H2O2 is released. So xanthine oxidase is the enzyme 
which is going to catalyze this reaction, this xanthine oxidase, converting hypoxanthine into xanthine by incorporating molecular oxygen, where molecular oxygen is released as hydrogen peroxide, and that's how you made xanthine there. So, this hydrogen peroxide, uh, as I said before, these reactions are going on in the peroxisome. So, the hydrogen peroxide is taken care by catalase enzyme. So, as you know, peroxisomes are rich in, uh, it contains high concentration of uh, catalase. So, there will be water. So, hydrogen peroxide is converted into water molecule by catalase enzyme. So, that is why catalase is present at high concentration in the peroxisome because peroxisomes, uh, the, the reactions involved in peroxisomes, uh, the, there will be release of hydrogen peroxide, not only in purine nucleotide biosynthesis, in also in very long chain fatty acid oxidation, there will be production of hydrogen peroxide. So, catalase, the way which is present there, it will take care of that hydrogen peroxide. Anyway, so hypoxanthine is converted to xanthine by xanthine oxidase enzyme. So, in the same way, once you get xanthine there, xanthine is converted into uric acid by same xanthine oxidase enzyme, where hydrogen peroxide is, means water, Oxygen molecular is, molecule is getting into that reaction, hydrogen peroxide is released and that hydrogen peroxide is converted into water by catalase enzyme as I explained before. Now, that's how you got uric acid here. So, the degradation product of purine nucleotides is uric acid there. So, now before I go a little more into the uric acid, let me explain you the applied aspect for xanthine oxidase here. So, whenever person has got high uric acid level like hyperuricemia as seen in gout or less Nehan syndrome. So, in order to decrease uric acid level, one of the drug that is used to decrease uric acid is allopurinol. So, allopurinol is used in decreasing uric acid level. What is the mechanism of allopurinol? Allopurinol is a structural analog of hypoxanthine or xanthine. So, it is basically a purine analog. So, uh, purine based analog. So, allopurinol is going to compete with uh, xanthine or hypoxanthine for same enzyme xanthine oxidase. Now, what xanthine oxidase, uh, what happens to xanthine oxidase if allopurinol binds to xanthine oxidase? So, if allopurinol binds to xanthine oxidase, so it will be converted by xanthine oxidase into oxypurinol. Oxypurinol, sometimes it is written as allozanthine oxypyrinol or allozanthine. This is the product of allopyrinol catalyzed by xanthine oxidase. So, then it's very initially there is a competition. Allopyrinol is competing with xanthine for the binding site of xanthine oxidase. Once allopyrinol binds to it, so it is going to be converted into oxypyrinol and this oxypyrinol is going to irreversibly bind with xanthine oxidase active site. Irreversible binding to active site. That means Xanthine oxidase, it is not coming out of xanthine oxidase active site. So, the active site of xanthine oxidase, it is occupied all times by oxypyrinol there and that's the end of the enzyme because you cannot remove it. So, that means you are totally uh, decreasing the activity of xanthine oxidase there. So, that, ma that means hypoxanthine is no longer converted into xanthine or xanthine is no longer converted into uric acid thereby bringing down uric acid level. So, only way to make uric acid there to make a new enzyme because this oxypyrinol is completely blocking the active site there, it is not available. So, this kind of phenomenon we call it as suicidal mechanism, suicidal inhibition. So, this is referred is one of the example for uh, suicidal inhibition. So, suicidal inhibition means allopyrinol means xanthine oxidase by converting allopyrinol into oxypyrinol. It has committed suicide. Why? Because if it would have not converted that allopurinol into oxypurinol, it would have not bound to it. So, it has committed suicide by converting allopurinol into oxypurinol. That is what is the suicidal inhibition. That's one of the applied aspects with uh, uric acid pathway. Now, let me explain to you a uh, little more on uric acid. So, the uric acid, as you know, the, uh, this is the uh, metabolic end product of purine nucleotides uh, and also this uric acid has to be thrown out of our body. So, because this is considered to be a waste product. So, there are so many other uh, papers. Uh, uh, there are some papers, research papers, they say that uric acid is acting as an antioxidant. 
but uh, for the sake of uh, simplicity so let's consider uric acid is a waste product coming from purine degradation pathway and it has to be secreted by the uh, renal tubular cells into the urine so now uric acid gets into the urine now you know that uh, urine ph it, is, uh, it can vary from 4.5 to 8 that's a wide range of ph there depending on the acid uh, base uh, status of the person so, but an onion average, uh, urine, uh, urine pH is uh, around 6. So, that's an average pH of urine. And now, look, look at the pK of uric acid is 5.4. So, you are here dealing with uh, uh, pH is almost equal to pK. Like pH is 6, pK is 5.4. So, pH is almost equal to pK. It means 50% of your uric acid will be there in uh, uric acid form that is protonated. 50% will be in uh, deprotonated form that is urate form. Now the thing here is uh, whenever uh, pH of urine falls to acidic side, more acidic side, like if the pH of urine uh, drops to less than 4 or 4.5 or maybe um, anything less than 4 there. So at that time what will happen? So you are dealing with pH less than pKa. So the pH, so that is because pKa of uric acid is 5.4, pH is uh, less than 4. So obviously pH is less than uh, pKa, it means this is an acidic urine here, pH uh, is less than 4, average is 6, like if it is less than 4, it's an acidic urine. So uh, pH less than pKa for uh, uric acid there, so in acidic urine, this uric acid will exist predominantly as uric acid in the protonated form. So during that protonated form, so this uric acid may not be soluble completely and also concentrated urine can lead to precipitation of uric acid into crystals. So you will see uric acid crystals and that can give rise to uric acid stone formation in the urine and also uric acid, excess uric acid crystals or the orange uh, sand uh, particles uh, which is basically uric acid crystals there. So that can give rise to a urinary tract infection and uh, consequences of urinary tract infection. That is why uh, whenever patient comes with urinary tract infection, so uh, one of the role of physician here is to make sure that uh, urine pH is tend to be a little alkaline side thereby uric acid do not precipitate and uh, do not give rise to the signs and symptoms of uh, that uric acid accumulation there. So we got to remember about that. So the pKa 5.4 and uh, pKa pKa pH relation between uric acid and the urine pH. So just have an idea on that. And of course, azanthine oxidase is one of the important enzymes here. And know that AMP and GMP nucleotides, purine nucleotides, ultimately converted into uric acid. And uh, purine degradation pathway is uh, one of the source of ammonium ion that need to be handled properly. It is one of the source of hydrogen peroxide, so that needs to be handled properly. So, this is all about uh, purine degradation pathway. Now, the pyrimidine degradation, just a little a few words about that. Pyrimidine degradation, that pyrimidines, that is um, uridine, cytidine, thymidine, all these molecules. So, they undergo degradation, uh, several enzymes are involved in that. But one thing that you got to remember here is, pyrimidine degradation products are water-soluble molecules like carbon dioxide, which is a gaseous molecule, ammonia, which is again a gaseous molecule, and that can be handled by uh, glutamate dehydrogenase and also beta alanine which can get out of our body in the urine. So majority of time these are water soluble molecules so it will be handled by our body. So uh, purine degradation product is uric acid so that can give us to hyperuricemia, gout and all that kinds of symptoms. If there is a renal failure or kidney failure there will be elevated levels of uric acid which can be problematic uh, as opposed to pyrimidine degradation product. Of course there can be problematic because of ammonia but considerably so, uric acid has more effects than the beta alanine and the carbon dioxide and other water soluble products coming from pyrimidines. Okay, so that's about uh, purine and uh, pyrimidine uh, degradation pathway. So, I hope this particular video has helped you in understanding uh, purine and pyrimidine degradation, uh, mainly purine, uh, purine degradation here and all the important points that I have explained. So I have other videos related to pyrimidine and pyrimidine metabolism. All the video links are available in the description below. Thanks for watching and if you like this video, give thumbs up. If you have any questions, put that question in the description below. And also leave your feedback if you wish to. And uh, consider subscribing to this channel so that you get a regular update whenever I make these kind of videos. Thanks again and uh, see you in my next video.